Hi, I'm Valerio. I'm a professional uh, embedded electronics designer and uh, on my spare time uh, I do repair arcade boards for myself and I do listen to Scene World podcast. Oh, this is our yearly meeting. Welcome to the Scene World podcast. We are talking today with Martin and AJ about what we um, experience at Gamescom, especially in the business area where we had tons of interviews and um i didn't I experience know. anything at gamescom because i was yeah. not at gamescom but we're well, we talking about we got, what these two did we, we got we got victor this year mm -hmm. and at some point we will get you there too yes eventually that's a matter of years yeah. or something <laughs> so who so uh, so who was at gamescom this year who went for us well um so in the retro area unfortunately all the big bosses weren't there they they skipped this year, so no, no, no I mean I mean no, I mean who from from our magazine went to Gamescom ah, this year. Okay. Well, the two Martins, Martin Wisnowski, Martin Aman. Victor was there from Peru, Lima. And um, our helpers from Bavaria. And uh, did did I miss somebody? No, I guess that's that was it already. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. And cool. yeah, that was it. So it started off pretty nice. Um, the first person we met at Gamescom on, on Tuesday was actually David Fox. Mm -hmm. You know, David Fox, coder of Maniac Mansion, Zach McCracken, Simbleweed Park. And yeah. she spent an over an hour with us at our booth and really? this was incredible yeah, yeah yeah that's awesome so he he he, he turned he turned up at 9 a.m so um and then he stayed there for one hour nerding around with us because he enjoyed <laughs> the podcast with aj and me so much yeah yes that's exactly. said like yeah sure we can meet because um a week earlier i actually saw a post that he is in frankfurt germany and was like okay let's meet in frankfurt and he, he, he replied no let's meet in cologne at gamescom like, oh even better you know um you meet in public where you can't kidnap him well yeah. why would i kidnap people uh, why not uh, i have to be careful that people don't kidnap my staff members because they are so awesome <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know um, um, yesterday, um, no, on Saturday I was at the Amiga 34 party and people told me like, I wish I had as much people as you have. Uh, well, well. <coughs> um, so um, the second person and also our first interview that we had was uh, Gary Pan. Gary Pan worked for Psychnosis and is a pioneer in uh, game design, game development. Mm -hmm. And um, he worked on something called Autonauts. And Autonauts um, is a strategy game. And I, I first thought when they invited us um, for an interview for a presentation, I was like, uh, okay, maybe not so much my kind of game, especially you know, something that is um, a new IP, unknown, pretty much. What, what's it called? But, Autonaut? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, like knots, like astronaut? Exactly. And auto, like automation. Hmm. Or automobile? And the concept. Oh, and no, the no, concept, no. Oh, oh, no, you told me about this. I remember this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And the concept behind this, that um, he, took, he took the best things from games like Settlers, Sims, SimCity, everything mushed in one game, and you are you are on on a new planet, and you are actually um, automation. You are planning automation of of the development of the uh, culture and the community. So that's why it's called Autonaut. So it's automation. You hmm. are. You are helping the AI to develop, kind of, and um, and you know, you know, Gary Penn, um, he's a pioneer, and he was so cheerful, and his eyes were so happy 
when when he realized that I know all these old games and that I totally understood the concept of the game that he was creating. Hmm. So um, so that's pretty pretty neat. That is. Um, yeah. And we have an interview with it. And um, as we did the last years, we will insert that. So yeah, who do sure. we have just audio for? That's just the the development um, of World Cup from Spain because they are um, working on a new Mega Drive game. Okay. And uh, Mana Quatsch is a German podcast that said like, hey, this is not only content that's interesting for all for our audience, which is only German, but also for you because you are international. Hello, please introduce yourself and uh, tell us something about your game. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, hello to all the audience for Manu Quest. Is, is that correct? The, this is Manu Segura. I'm from Spain. I'm uh, part of uh, 1985 Alternativo is the name of the group. Um, we are building games for 8-bit, 16-bit era. Uh, mainly focused on Mega Drive is one of uh, our strongest uh, platforms. And uh, regarding the games that uh, we took this year to the, uh, to the Gamescom, um, Maybe our biggest game for the moment is uh, 1985 World Cup. is a soccer-related game. It's not really soccer. It's uh, like a fighting game. Maybe you, maybe you uh, know Wing Jammers from the Neo Geo. It's a duel, so it's built uh, almost like a duel between uh, two players that uh, has a unique characteristic that we can tell you about mm -hmm. later. And I also took care of uh, programming, music, and graphics of a much smaller game. is uh, meant for the Game Boy. It's almost finished. Uh, it's a side scroll scroller where you have to uh, well escape from one large dungeon, uh, avoiding things and uh, traps on the floor and enemies and such. Mm -hmm. um, when is the planned release date for both games? I think that both games um, will be released. I hope this year, later this year, or no, maybe on before Christmas or around Christmas because uh, both are more, mostly finished but uh, for for example for the Game Boy game I have to do the, um, the cover art and it takes a lot of time uh, it's uh, the biggest step I have to take on that one and afterwards we have to build uh, the cartridges build the uh, uh, ROMs inside of uh, PCBs and shells and prepare all the package let's say and uh, it's also more or less the same for the football game is mostly finished, uh, graphics is 100% uh, done, programming is 97% or 98% done and we need to, we are right now planning uh, the, all the package thing, uh, the cover art is done on that case. Uh, I hope both games will be available. First one and after a few months maybe, then the second one. And is there uh, already a price point you want to sell these games? Uh, there is still no price as far as I know because uh, I normally take care of uh, programming or graphics or cover but I don't take care about distribution, manufacturing, packaging. Uh, we, we, anyway, our prices are never high because we don't do this. We, we like to say that we don't do games for the money but for the glory. <laughs> and uh, it's normally... Uh, the charges for the, the materials themselves is not, I hope you don't find them expensive. And um, do you have any plans to convert the games to other platforms? This is a question that um, a lot of people is uh, doing to, uh, to us um, a lot recently because um, we took it, especially the football game, to uh, several fairs mm -hmm. recently and people see a lot of potential and we are really thinking hard about uh, porting it to newer platforms. Mm -hmm. Regarding the, the the Game Boy game, it's a smaller one, maybe it's converted to uh, a master system or other system, other platform that shares a bit uh, about the, how the programs are built. Mm -hmm. But I don't think uh, the Game Boy one is uh, going much farther. But, but we are strongly thinking about porting to other platforms a uh, football game since 19, uh, 1985 World Cup. And um, will there be a demo available in terms of EverDrive? Yes, we have also plans for a demo that should happen really soon. I still don't have a date, but for the football game should be a demo. And... Mm, it will happen, I hope, in some point around September. 
I still have to talk about the rest of the guys, programmer and um, the rest of the guys. But uh, we already talked about that and should be very soon. Yeah, that's great. So um, anything else you have to tell the audience? Um, I would like you to pay a little bit of attention regarding this uh, 1985 World Cup because we did something uh, very special in this occasion. Uh, one of the hardware guys in, in our team is just a genius and he built a Wi-Fi module in time inside of a PCB of a, of a multi, uh, sorry, of the Genesis. It's mm -hmm. in, in, in your country it's Genesis, right? Uh, Megadrive. Mega Drive. Oh, uh, so in it's, the US. Okay, so it's uh, like in Spain. Yeah. We built a Wi-Fi module in the PCB and we are able to play some penalty kick matches with two Mega Drives connected on a server, for example, from here to somewhere in whatever in the world. Mm. So uh, we think it's a very unique yeah. characteristic and uh, it's never done before. Mm. I would like you to pay a little bit of attention because it's going to be something spectacular. Connecting uh, to machines 30 or 35 years old mm. over the internet to play, I think it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so Sounds special to me. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for taking the time and uh, yeah, have fun at the fair at Gamescom. It's my pleasure. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty. Yes, and um, though other games were um, interesting. Yes. Now the interesting part comes. There okay. is, um, you know, TH Nordic. TH Nordic um, is taking over old IPs and making mm. successors of old games, you know, like Equinox, like um, Wreckfest, which is a successor of Flat Out 2. And, and this year they did something special. They said like, hey, we have here new games, like new game one, new game two, new game three, you know? And Sounds then, playable. Yeah. <laughs> and so... So, um, you know, and they were like, ah, old IP, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and then you were describing, you know, little hints of what kind of game it should be. And so I decided to sign us up for um, New Game 2. And the New Game 2 was actually Comanche. Mm. They are making a reboot of Comanche, the awesome helicopter uh, simulation more like an action game. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we we talked a little bit about that in the intro to the last podcast. With, exactly. Um, with um. Exactly. With uh, and uh, actually, the developers are Cologne people. Mm -hmm. And and, they smell and really Martin, good. the other Martin, Martin Wisniewski, our graphic guy, yeah. actually knows somebody working on this game, but he was not allowed to tell anybody. Mm. So when I told him we were just at the Comanche presentation, he was like, yes, I know my friend is working on that, you know? Mm. So um, so we had connections to them without even knowing it, uh, for, at least from me. And I guess, Martin, um, I don't know how you see it, but but I, f I found it amazing. It's, um, it really was amazing. Um, just for me, as a retro gamer, <coughs> retro gamer the graphics were, were splendid. The playability was splendid. The, the the game concept actually was very interesting, because it's not just flying around and shooting stuff. There, there were there were uh, such new options for playing around with the drone. You you remember mm -hmm. just to get another view, point of view on the game. That was very interesting. Yeah. And also something new happened this year. Um, you know what we know as split screen now got a new name now it's called couch co-op oh okay yeah <laughs> okay so, okay hey yeah it, you know it's like we've gone we've gone full circle in that people have forgotten what split screen was in the first place it's it's just like it's just like you know back in the day the our old the old computers were, were, were single tasking they could do one thing right then multitasking came along and suddenly with the Amiga you could have a bunch of apps open with the Mac you could have a bunch of apps open but and then and then the iPad came along and it's like you're doing one thing and now you've got this thing even on the Mac it's like a split screen one side is this app one side is that app and that's multitasking no that's not multitasking 
Like they forgot that you can have like I've got 16 applications open right now, you know, doing this doing this podcast. You know, it's like that's multitasking. I don't it's not two apps next to each other. Yeah, anyway, so what we knew as split screen is now called couch co-op. And they are working on a couch co-op mode. And um, it was interesting. So I, I'm I'm relearning, um, <laughs> you know, new new uh, old concept with new yeah. with new names. And actually, they said is uh, is also interesting. They will support the old flight sticks. Yeah. From the nineties. Okay. So if you get uh, if you get um, if you get um, a MIDI connector, which is also called a game port because it's yeah. the same connector, and you have an adapter for USB, you can actually put it on and it will work hmm. on a PC, which is is amazing that uh, a game will support like joysticks from 20 years ago. Yeah, you know this uh, is a great time for split screen. We're just jumping back to that real quick because it just occurred to me co-op. that yes, okay, <laughs> couch co-op. <laughs> Well, back in back in the olden days when we used it, we had you know your four or three TVs, you know. So it was if you did split screen, your your view was compromised because you only had like this much space to work with. But now everything is widescreen, so you're really every a split screen view is really like your four or three display next to two of them next to each other, which is I wish that that's what we had back back in the eighties when we were trying to you know. Mm play whatever game what it, well pit stop 2 was was top and bottom yeah yeah but also, yeah also, but there were certain games good. that were side by side and it was just it was always yeah. always annoyed me because most of those games go to the left and the right and suddenly your 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 field of view is is shot now you know you're mm. you look at this little tiny section but yeah so anyway, this um, presentation unfortunately um, wasn't wasn't available for recording, but we have trailers we mm-hmm. can put in here. Yes. Um, which is actually funny because we did it last time already. Yeah. At least a snippet you put in. Um, you can just okay. pull it out of that out of the intro and stick it in here again. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> no. And um, so the other one um, was Beyond Blue. From Eline Media, and Martin wasn't part there because he was he was sick on Wednesday, mm. unfortunately. But the interesting story is, it's a BBC simulation game. So if you ever wonder what BBC is doing with the money they earn, they go into digital digitalization and actually uh, let media companies develop games you know and they used they used original footage they took from the real world from the real real undersea world and uh, put that into program code with with um with the graphic engine so the animals oh, the sea creatures gotcha. they yeah. are really really acting like like um real creatures <laughs> yeah and the interesting thing is that um i i went i went there um with one of the sons from jürgen our bavarian supporter and um they you know they, those are kind of people that normally play call of duty yeah. and i was thinking like oh he will be bo- he will be bored to hell you know with this presentation, but he was totally fascinated. He was like, wow, this is great. This is really realistic, you know? And they even got voice actors. So you have a connection to the hub, which is on the on the sea, that gives you command what to do next, where, um, where the next waypoint is to have to go, and to have to um, solve uh, certain tasks and so it's a pretty unique concept. Hmm. And since since uh, BBC is putting original mat- material in it, it's really realistic. Hmm. So it's like an open world, okay, but under sea, hmm. which is totally interesting. You've got a thing for it under the sea, don't you? Yeah, Equinox. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. No, most of the things that you're really jazzed about are like underwater stuff. 
I'm 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 a person. I really love new concepts. I like when um, when when game developers or something when people are working on new things, hmm. not the same thing over and over again. I mean, hey, um, Pro Evolution Soccer. Uh-huh. Same thing, you know. Did you ever watch the TV show uh, Sequest? Yes, that was awesome. I loved awesome that show. Nice I loved, the first season, I loved. The rest of it was, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a great show. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 for certain. Done with Amigas. Yes. Video toaster. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so hey, let's let's jump let's jump right into the next topic. Mm-hmm. Pro Evolution Soccer. <laughs> yeah, okay. And the the interesting first thing is that happened is it's no longer called Pro Evolution Soccer. It's not now called electronic soccer. Okay. Yes, because <laughs> they want to they want to go more towards competition gaming, esports. Okay. And as we all know, that professional e-game sport events are all using FIFA soccer. And now Konami officially wants a portion of that cake as well. Okay. And the uh, the first thing they did is actually they got a new presenter um and actually interesting is they uh, got somebody from latin america who is really passionate um about the product you know and he he they really and even this time it was not like oh we are making another po- a powerpoint uh, um sheet you know slide mm-hmm. and and then we click through that so um, this time they even uh, showed us how the race tracking of the players was done and how they photographed the stadiums to, re- to look really real, you know. And um, so that was a, a different kind of power, um, our so, pro evolution soccer gaming. So have they redone the entire, because because the engine for, we when we played it a couple of years ago, yeah. I guess it was yeah. now. 2015 um, was yeah. Um, that was using the Unreal Engine. Yes. Yes, yes. which was which was a little bit unusual for a sports game to use because that's normally something you use for you know, for I don't know like something else. You, you don't normally don't use it for for that sort of thing. And uh, they were using the Unreal Engine to do it, and it was it looked really nice. It was realistic looking uh the game physics were were good because again using the unreal engine it's really like real world kind mm-hmm. of stuff and that was big at the time because because they they i think it was maybe like their second year of using it and it was like a big change from what they had been doing before so now they've revamped it again totally yeah when we when we spoke with adam betty mm-hmm. he admitted openly that people were were hitting them because of slow performance Right, but that's what you. I mean, Unreal Engine. That's what you're going to get because that's like a real world physics yeah. engine. So he was very this. pleased when you said you were amazed that it works on crappy configuration yeah. that you tried, and he was like, "Oh, you are the only one being uh, so nice about it." <laughs> so I still remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I played it on a virtual machine on a Mac. So I mean, and it, it played fine. You know, it played perfectly. It was perfectly playable. With lower settings and whatnot, and and you know, some of the the players had you know, dead shark eyes, but that's to be expected from you know the, un- the unwhole uncanny valley thing is not solved yet, <laughs> but but yeah, it played well. I thought it was it was pretty good. So to hear that they they switched it around and now they're doing a totally different method of doing this is kind of. But they didn't name the name of the engine they are using. Mm. They kept that a bit secret. Is it proprietary? You know? Do you think? I don't know. Um, they didn't really mention it. They more focused on, you know, like now you have um, better look of the stadium. Now you have like, um, depending on how the sun, how, how the sun is standing, the stadium looks different, you know. Mm. So it's more dynamic and more to the real world. Um, it's 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 amazing that they traveled to all the stadiums to make pictures and yeah. 3D um, um, recordings and all that stuff. And so uh, Konami is really putting a lot of energy into that. It's it's incredible. Mm. Um, right. 
Okay. Well, I guess do we have something to look at for that? Of course, sure. Okay, well, sure. why don't we take a look at that? What would I get? Playing is believing? Okay, I'm interested. Let's do that. Well, go hard and gay, bro. No wonder we came up. It's incredible. Time for the break, show something in the name of the AS. Nah, no way. Might be good, but we go gay. Sunrise in the dust right, ah, uh, all grind at all times, please don't mind me, I won't mind, <laughs> as we all should be, no free games, please pardon me. Playing is believing. Playing is believing. Playing is believing. What about a grand? Playing is believing. Playing is believing. Playing is believing. Yeah. Um. So, what's happened? What happened next? Yes, we we met. Um. Brendan Keenan from Anstream. Hmm. Yes, and Anstream. Martin and I, we played against him. Um, Who and won? we lost. Oh. What'd you play? <laughs> um, Shotgun. Oh, okay. From Christian Kleinsner. Oh. Because his booth was parallel to ours. Hmm. And <laughs> um, the problem is, Martin and I, we are both pretty bad players. Yes, we and are. And was like, you are letting me win. You're letting me win. Like, no, we are really crappy players. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And then later he wrote he wrote in an uh, he wrote in a post, you know, thanks for letting me win. <laughs> and I, uh, no, we didn't. Um, you really, you are really this bad. <laughs> so, um, it was yeah. a lot of fun anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes, cool. what happened then was um, we were at Assemble, Assemble again and um, and we, we made, we made um, interviews again. We made a follow-up about the current development of Five Risers and this time with um, Nico and his dad Marcus, which our listeners know from the last podcast. Mm -hmm. Because this one is coming before this one here, so <laughs> déjà vu. I don't, I don't know yeah. what's coming before what anymore. <laughs> I'm so confused about where things are, where yeah. we are in the in the order of things. Um, you know, we played. Now the three of us played yes. High Risers a while back, and yes. it was for a video that didn't get used. <laughs> yes, because unfortunately, when we wanted to use it, your dog died. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes. So, oh, we were yes. gonna use it for that. That's right. Oh. Yeah. Mm. It was. It was meant as a break filler. Yes. Yes. You know. Um, and then that was that was um, extra life. Exactly. Yes. So that is why we never used it. Yeah, because we didn't get more than an hour in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But hey, um, at least we got an interview with the two creators from the game. That's even, even more, more hmm. than we actually hoped for. Okay. Yeah. So the other, um, the other game mm -hmm. we have actually watched, and which is actually um, fitting to the theme of horror games, is Deadly Days which is a horror survival game and you are shooting around like mad. Is this, this is this retro or brand new? It's it's uh, brand new but with very pixelated graphics. And what's it's it called more again? like a Deadly Days. 
deadly. I, I just want to look it up here so I can yeah. reference what you're talking about because I don't actually. And here, here's the funny oh, thing. Oh, it's on that Steam. I'm... Yeah, it's already released. And and here here's the funny thing that that Martin doesn't know, but I have to tell him. You know, um, let let me explain you guy how the presentation at um, Assemble works. Assemble works like you make an appointment for one game, and when you are there, like. Oh, we have another two games for you to show. Do you have enough time? And then you go there and then like, like, okay, time's up, next game, you know? And Martin here was sick, so our Martin Wisniewski, which you will get to know in a future episode, <laughs> um, he, 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 you know, we were too early and they were like, oh, do you want to drink and eat something before the appointment starts? He was like, yeah, sure, I will take a cup of coffee. And I tell him, maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> oh, why not? I will take a second cup of coffee. <clears throat> maybe you shouldn't. And then, you know, and then the first, the first, the first interview was, was done, which was high risers. Mm -hmm. And they're like, and then he was starting to stop the recording, packing together the camera. And then suddenly, next! I'm like, oh my God, it's continuing. I think I told you. Don't drink a coffee before the interviews because <laughs> this is going to be a marathon of interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he had to pee all the time, you know. Like, <laughs> well, you have to hold it in. You have to hold it in. Just so uh... wear a diaper to Gamescom. That's just the rule. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that was a little side joke. Uh, like, mm. oh my God, you didn't tell me. I, said, I gave you a warning, you know. Yeah. He said, don't don't do it. This will be a long appointment. <laughs> Yeah, and and the other one is Encodia, and Encodia is very interesting because Encodia is done by an Italian, um, by an Italian movie director, who who lives in Estonia, and okay. now moved now moved to um, video game development. All right. And um, he he made a Kickstarter that went successful. It's funded. Um, Ensemble Entertainment is the publisher, and he is creating. Um, and uh, it's based in Berlin. I think the year is um, is uh, three thousand twenty-five, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And so it's in the future, and um, there is this robot, and this little child who is trying to um, help in the game that the world doesn't end, you know? And, and the thing is, why it's, why it's, why it's um, focused on retro is that um, the, the, games, the game has things like you are going into an old computer store and there are 5.25 inch floppy disks and CDs with Day of the Tentacle. Hmm. And and there are monkeys from Monkey Island jumping around. Hmm. Hmm. So they are everywhere in the game. They are little hints to 80s and, and, and 90s video games. It's so, hard not to find so, discs now. Yeah. Hmm. They're going to be so, floating around. Um, and... Yeah. So um, this game is constantly punching on the past. <laughs> so it was very interesting for us. And we and um, the um, interview started with a presentation of the trailer, and then the interview started. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at that now. Neo Berlin 2062. Cyberspace has supplanted human connection. A little girl and her robot are on a mission that could change the world they live in. Ready to join them on a wonderful adventure? A classic point and click adventure tackling the themes of tomorrow. Incredible art, music, and sound design. Guest star voice actors for an immersive storyline. Talk with dozens of characters and solve hundreds of puzzles. 
lead Tina and Sam through a journey to discover the essence of human nature. Join the journey to Encodia. Alrighty. Yes, and then we actually moved to Konami and um, Konami presented Contra a reboot from Contra, mm. and um, um, I spoke about this with Martin a lot. So the next game at Konami, we had two appointments at Konami this year, was Contra. Yes, they're the remaking Contra it. Re yes, they're rebooting it. And I have to say, for me personally, this was the best presentation of Gamescom. It was on top, because Celine from Konami UK, who, who did the presentation, she started out with Cheese, please introduce yourself to us and how you are connected to the Contra games. And, you know, and there, the others were mostly YouTubers, mm -hmm. interestingly. And uh, some were like 20 plus and like, mm -mm, uh, 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 hmm. uh, um, I've never played the game before. And I, okay, so you have no connection to Contra. And then, then, then I started like, yeah, we are doing a retro uh, magazine and also a podcast since almost 20 years. And we started to covering just the Commodore 64, but also NES right now and other retro games and mm -hmm. IPs. So I was like, okay, I'm in the, I'm in the correct presentation here. So that was, was quite nice. Have, and um, have, have either of you ever beaten Contra? Here's the question. No, far. so bad. I'm so bad at games. Never I, beat me. I, you know, I never, I never had the original Contra when I had my NES. I did have Super C. Um, yeah. And I swear, I never made it past the first level. It's super hard. I all, suck all Contra so games bad. Are super hard. Yeah, I know. All Contra games are super hard. I, I watch these playthroughs, and people are just like ja shab, you know, jumping through and like. Like, you know, like down and then up and then ducking this and passing that. It's like, holy Christ. Like, like that first, the first pair of guys with, with a gun, I get shot. Huh. Mm. Huh. It's even not called so Contra in Germany, but I forgot actually what it was, the name was in uh, And in I always German. thought, I also, I always thought, you know, Contra being the name of the thing, I always thought it had to do with like, it was a war thing and had to do with like, you know, the Contras in like South America and stuff. It's freaking aliens. I had I didn't I didn't know that. I watched a walkthrough and realized it was aliens. I th I thought I was fighting like you know like Colombian rebels or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that and uh, Commando too. Commando is the other one. I didn't realize Commando is not that long a game. And I've never gotten past the first stage of Commando. Oh okay. Never, never made it past the first stage. I, I'm terrible at it. But it, I always thought like it was a long game and maybe didn't even have an end. And then I watch a playthrough. Someone finishes in eight minutes. Yeah, I know. Like yeah, that's really the whole game. Very good players. <laughs> I'm just trying to to um, to find what it was called in Germany because mm. I suck so much. I look really old in glasses, and I don't like it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's yeah, yeah. In Germany, it was called Pro Protector. What called what? A Pro Protector. Pro, pro prote Protector. Yeah. 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 Like the protector of pros. Not not pro. Probe. 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 Pro protector. Probe protector. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things going through my mind right now. <laughs> it's Germany, hey. <laughs> 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 was it right? Probe protector. Probe protect. Okay, that's that's different. That's different. So we have to be lucky. Uh, we are lucky that it wasn't called Herman the German <laughs> or some <of> this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probe probe protector. Probe protector. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did yeah. not know that. That makes more sense than Contra, though, because again, Contra. I'm thinking of like South American rebels, because you know, I mean, like that we had the whole Iran Contra thing in the '80s. You know, that was that. That's what I associate the term Contra with. And I wish this guy would stop sawing things. Ah, don't worry about it. All good. 
Yeah. So anyway, anyway, what I wanted to say is I really liked the way that um, Konami did the presentation this year. Hmm. I didn't know how Martin sees it, but um, I was so fascinated because you know um, Celine is like um, um, end of her twenties, pr- um, French uh, video game, well presentator, pre amateur, and she learned all the history about Contra games, everything, every bit. And she put it into the presentation. And was like, oh my god, she really, she really played all the the earlier games, and so she knew what she was talking about. And then after the presentation, she was actually letting us play and giving instructions, like, hey, go here, go there. And um, of course, um, the uh, gameplay is has changed. It's no longer side scroller. It's more isometric. Mm-hmm. It's like. Um, it's like an um, isometric brawler, hmm. so um, you are going around and shooting things like um, kind of, kind of like, like command um, or something. Um, um, I uh, was um, oh god, what the the uh, that 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 game that I did a review of. Oh, you mean bombshell? Yes, bombshell. Yeah. Yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, yeah, a bit like bombshell. Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how Martin thinks. This is Kaiser. See that drill he's got instead of a hand? Drill and a kill. He's real proud of it. Hungry bee. HB is actually a cyborg with a human brain. I love him so much. This is Miss Harakiri and her alien gut bucket. They survive by merging together during the alien wars. The gentleman, he was used in an experimental program, the sweetest bug you'll ever meet. You soiled my arm. And then there's me, Lily. But you can call me Arrow Captain. about it maybe he should tell his point of view but i think it was the best presentation so far i really like this presentation the presentation was awesome yeah um well i i have no connection to the game either because i didn't have any nes system or anything uh to play the game in, in the early days but i think um in the end uh we had most fun playing the game besides 3d rams actually but yeah. we will come to this later then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you have to understand that last year Konami was not so interesting. Right. You know, especially the Pro Evolution Soccer. What what did you what did you call what could you call it, Martin? You said like this guy was um was not emotionally connected to to the game and was just clicking um, yeah, he was. Um, he was just sitting around and, and clicking with this uh, PowerPoint presentation and uh, <laughs> He didn't have any social skills because we, we like to talk besides all this stuff and get in contact with him, but he didn't want to. He just sat there clicking and yeah. saying goodbye, and that, that, that was it. Yeah? No questions allowed, by the way, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, this is a presentation, and now I go. You can find me. You can find me around later, and oh, that's it. And there he went. That was the presentation last year. And this year they said, like, Oh, he was stuck in the traffic, you know? So we got somebody from Latin America. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. very passionate. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
I don't know if he was really stuck in the traffic I'm, or. Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and that's and that's interesting because um, you know years before um, Konami told us you know we will not go into retro no way mm -hmm. and now they are doing contra that. and and we will only let talk do presentations or interviews that have accent free English and you know you know you can imagine this guy had a very strong uh, Spanish accent so. Yeah. And Celine had a French accent, I, so um, I don't remember they, the the accent free English bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it was it was hard to get Ed and Betty because, um, well, we had to get permission from Konami. Right, I remember. Um, and that. I said like, hey, it can also be somebody from from the development team in in Japan. We don't mm -hmm. mind it or somebody from Germany because originally I connect I I got in touch with Konami Germany right. and they told me no we can't do an interview with 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 you because of our German accent. <laughs> you know? And right. and that is that is actually the reason why but Konami really changed. They changed like um 180 degree this year. Yeah. You know, they yeah. they got young people they don't care about the accent anymore. It's more important that they have passion for the game and can can transport this passion for the game to the press. Well, they see what you know? the where the where the, the the writing on the wall is now. You know where everything's going, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so, um, um, so for me, it was it was very very good, and and also new this year. There was there was giveaways, goodies, you know, hmm. you know. We got T-shirts. Really? Yeah. And and, nice. and uh, yeah, and and all that stuff. It's pretty pretty interesting because in the past only in the entertainment area you got freebies. Hmm. Yeah. You know? oh. Now now it's not called freebies. It's called merch. Free <coughs> merch. Yes, merch. Every, everything has a new f. Everything has a new name now. Uh, <laughs> Like the NES is called NES and the SNS is called SNES. SNES, as yeah. As you learned earlier, yeah. So um, that was nice. Who yeah. Ever, who, call, who ever called the NES the NES too? I never. No one ever called it that that I remember. Wait, I didn't <laughs> call it a NES when I was a kid. It was an Nintendo. It was either a Nintendo or an NES. That's all we ever called it. Yeah. Yeah. Or in the long form, Nintendo Entertainment System. But nobody ever. I, but I was no never money. like like like. You know, like, hey, Jim, let's go to your house and play with your Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was always just good. Yeah, let's go play Nintendo. Yeah. Or if it was by myself, I was playing No Friendo. What are you playing? No Friendo. No Friendo. What's what's if No I was, Friendo? If I, was, hey, if I was playing, by, if I was playing my, with myself at the on the on the NES, you know, then then it was No Friendo. Okay. <laughs> no friend though. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, then let's let's jump to the next. Let's jump to the next uh, yes. part. And here's this. Here's the funny thing. Because this year we we made we we made the visit to three um, D Rams a bit different than last yes. year. Because for once, Martin had his intern with him. And we told her, you know, now we get, now we get, now we give you the point of this view from the business side. And we took her, and we went to wait, wait, to slow, the slow down, one, slow down, one minute, one minute. Who had an yeah. intern? Martin brought his her, his intern yeah. with, with. You have an intern? With, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the yeah. whole story. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, but HA doesn't know it. So. That's, that's yeah. obvious, um, like uh, someone to go yeah. fetch your coffee and stuff, and. That's fantastic. Yeah, but, but she she refuses to give me coffee. She only gives me tea. So oh, <laughs> that's okay because so I'm anyway, uh, not to fetch my coffee. Anyway, you know, no. you know, like okay, we do some socializing, and now you get the business part of this thing. Yeah, yeah. And and, and then Martin was like, oh, don't don't forget, we are going to the Danish now, so you have to speak English. And she was like, no, no English, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we did it anyway. Like, oh, let's go and. Um, and um, so <coughs> the surprise was actually that, um, you know, the publisher is a C2, which is actually um, a Czech Republic, you know. Right. 
And, you know, the days before, I was used to, to talk English or either English or German. And, you know, it was on a Saturday. Um, Gamescom was almost over. I was very, very tired. And I stood there at the, um, at the info point and, you know, at um, the front desk mm -hmm. from this booth and I talked German to her. And after five minutes, she was like, what? I was like, okay, a 20 years old uh, woman from Czech Republic doesn't know any German. Okay. Um, after, after we resolved this issue, there was actually a surprise because um, Scott Miller was there. Scott Miller, the hmm. inventor of um, Shareware concept, you know, and I was like, oh, my God. Scott Miller is there. I, I, I didn't know that because Fred said, ah, oh, Fred and Mike will be here. But no, Fred wasn't there because he was actually r driving a racing car during Gamescom. Hmm. So obviously... Why don't we have lives like this? <laughs> this dude can't make Gamescom to, for, because, you know, he, he, he can't... He can't... The, the the software company that he runs is at Gamescom, but he's not there because he's out driving race cars. Yeah. Like like what what are we doing what are we doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Scott Miller was there and uh, Frederick Schreiber, and we all know Frederick Schreiber. Mm -hmm. Frederick Schreiber is living for video games. Yes. Oh my god! Oh my god! And. It's totally, totally amazing. And, and he is, he's always so happy that, you know, ah, and, and he was telling to Scott, you remember those guys? They are doing a disc magazine, hardcore. And, and he told the PR people that were there from C2 Publishing, yeah, those are those guys I told you about. You know, they are doing retro magazines and podcasts. Really awesome guys, you know. Like, okay, we are not here for our prize. We are here for your product presentation. <laughs> and, uh, of course, he played for us and made some comments, and we got a video of that, too. But I just wanted to share the common passion for retro games and it, it really felt a bit like like playing doom and stuff you know and um the atmosphere is really mm. scary like from yeah, the yeah. old 90s um shoot em up games right. uh, not shoot em right. up um ego shooter games ego yeah. shooter games yes first person shooter for america first person shooter or ego shooter right yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah and also yeah as we know shoot em up is not called shoot em up anymore it's called shmup Ah, well. <laughs> but, <coughs> Shmup. Actually, we, we, we should talk a little bit about the, the new games from 3D Rants because while you were playing and uh, doing some excellent killing job there, <laughs> uh, I had a talk with uh, one of the developers. I don't have this name anymore, but... Um, I played also some minutes there, and he, he told me how, how I find the atmosphere in, in the end. And I said, hey, I don't know what it is, but it's not actually um, playing a modern game with some pixelated graphics. In the end, he said, the thing is, you are playing the old engine. It's it's not something new. It's the old engine, but we made it new. So uh, in the huh. end, we are playing real retro games now. But they feel a little bit bad. Uh, the feeling is the same than we had when we were young, but a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer. Yeah. yeah. So like it should be. That yeah. was really interesting. Yeah. And I got a bit goose skin when the zombies were behind me and like. <laughs> uh, uh, and it was oh me. <laughs> like, oh my god this is really feeling realistic oh my god yeah. you know i really got scared a bit hmm. and to get me goose skin by playing a video game or computer game that takes a lot yeah yeah you know um <laughs> anyway uh yeah <laughs> so uh, this is um this this was also a total um a total um, uh, nice presentation, and I, I met I met Scott Miller, my hero from the childhood, in person. That was awesome. And of course, he was totally modest, like, I, "Oh, Scott, don't don't you want to add anything to what Fred said?" Like, no, Fred is mostly right in what he says. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> then not. Yeah. 
And, okay. and then Martin then Martin was explaining to his intern like, no, you you shook hand with one of the most important people from the from the video game industry who invented the shareware concept. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> tell someone who doesn't play any games what the shareware concept is. Yeah, but right, see, yeah, yeah. I tried. I tried to <laughs> give some information. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, the the business area of um, Gamescom is actually where you meet all the um, the VIPs and developers. And um, on our way back from um, from um, the Auto Autobots uh, Auto sorry Autonauts uh, interview presentation, I also um, shook hands with John Hare. Yes, because he also soccer. had a business. Yeah, yeah, and because he also had a business appointment, and that's funny because you go to you go to interviews and then you need other people that you met and interviewed before at Gamescom yeah. because they also have an appointment like you in mm -hmm. the same place you have right now, and and on our way back we actually we actually met Joachim Hesse, who is um, um, a very known German. Um, journalist, he worked for PC games and, and PC action and all that stuff, and he is now um, the editor and uh, second man behind Krunk, which is the biggest German YouTuber. But behind in who? In the video game area. Who? Pardon? Behind Krunk. who? Krunk? Krunk. Krunk. Yeah, he is called Krunk. Krunk. Yeah, <laughs> and it's interesting because. When we returned from Konami, he had his appointment with Konami about Contra. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, it's like there are people that that you never see in the entertainment area because they are just spending all their time in the business area making interviews, business talks, ne ne negotiations, bit, uh, budget planning mm -hmm. with publishers, you know. So for me, it's like, wow, hmm. another guy I know. So it uh, was really interesting. And, and the thing is, the thing is, people were very much prepared. So um, Celine totally knew who we are. And when, when, I was at, um, when I was at the Gary Penn in the uh, UK IE booth, the UK, um, the UK um, video game industry, the PR manager actually had our homepage yeah. open on our smart uh, on her smartphone, and I, I, I got a glimpse of it. I was like, okay, hmm. they were informed, you know, because the last years I always had the feeling like, who are those guys? Yeah. Okay, we we invited him for an interview. Why? <laughs> and 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 this year it's more like, oh, okay. Either either they already knew who we are, or they interview uh, they they um, they um, well they informed themselves. Yeah, really research. But also this year we got we got more interviews, appointments, mm -hmm. invitations, than me asking for being invited. Right. So I, I Martin and I we really sat there for like one a.m. a week before. And, and trying to arrange a time slot so we can attend at all interviews <laughs> because we got so many this this year. Yeah. Um, yeah this yeah. is this is a change. It's, it's a positive change because it's easier if publishers and uh, companies want you to come. That's generally product. easier. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's also harder because it means you have more appointments to attend yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And then I don't remember which interview we were with, with us. Was it Desperados 3, Martin, or was it yeah. Destroy All Humans? Which one did you... I was at Desperados 3. Yeah, Desperados 3. We, yeah. we, we, so, got, we got these uh, freebies with these uh, cowboy things. Oh. What are they yeah, called? Scarves. Scarves, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. And 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 in the interesting thing is that um, the uh, presentation was also done by TSH Nordic, and during the presentation they told us an interesting thing is, and they told us 
because Desperados 2, uh, 1, Desperados 1 was from 2001, so like 18 years ago, and they told us that people didn't like the second part, you know, so they actually rolled back the graphic engine. Okay. So okay. now the third part is looking exactly or almost exactly as the original one 18 years ago. All right, all right. And that, that was also an interesting concept. Yeah. <clears throat> and of course, they polished it a bit with more light effects, you know? Yeah. They said, okay, we introduced light effects because the hardware was too slow 18 years ago, so we couldn't do it, but we did it now. But anyway, the game... Um, 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 engine is, is the same as 80 years ago hmm. and of course you know it's round based um, strategy game yeah. so it's as you know it you know like you shoot then you wait for your opponent to shoot right. yeah, 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 yeah. and um, um, Desperados 3 is typical so Desperados game isometric top down exactly. turn based exactly. thing and, and this is this is what I find interesting this year um, that um either the publishers used a totally different a graphic engine than before or they actually go went back to the old graphic engine so it's not only 3d realms taking mm -hmm. the old graphic engine but also thk nordic so it, it seems like publishers are realizing okay it's not about the graphics mm -hmm. it's more yeah. about the gameplay yeah well it's, yeah exactly and it's about time that they started realizing that because yeah yeah you can only 3 eyes so many things. It's never felt so right. And revenge has never felt so sweet. I will be your worst and darkest dream. I'm gonna do that. And um, the other one was where, where the other Martin was part of was Destroy All Humans reboot. Mm -hmm, yeah. Destroy All Humans, I guess Martin knows it too. Um, you have to, well, destroy all humans, you know. It's a pretty fun action game. Okay. You know? they, they put some more mind controlling techniques for, um, for the game. So, and they polish the graphics, but basically it's a reboot of the game mm -hmm. with a bit with a bit more gameplay in it. And the interest, the most interesting thing is actually, it's done by Black Forest Games, and Black Forest Games is the uh, biggest indie studio because it got famous um, for um, um, making Genesis or Swiss Dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was pretty interesting for me hmm. to to see because um, Destroy All Humans is also a game that I played with friends of mine when we met like four of us um, on an Xbox. Uh, Destroy All Humans, that the remake is is built. That, that's using the Unreal Engine. <laughs> Here we go. We're going back full circle. Yeah, yeah. Product not yet rated.
statement firmly refuting any rumors of alien activity and labeling them communist propaganda aimed at undermining the American way of life. So, and also, we had a follow-up with Matt Fire about Elder Scrolls Online. And this year, I was a bit more prepared, because I didn't prepare at all. <laughs> because we got a helper here. We got David Fellner, uh, one of the sons from Jürgen. And he said, no problem, I will do the interview. Mm -hmm. So he really, he really dug deep into this. And, uh, you know, he asked all the main questions, you know. Right. And um, so, as you can see in the interview, um, he talks about the uh, new worlds from Elder Scrolls Online and all that stuff. And also, it's one of the first games um, where Matt Fire decided yeah, to use Stadia, Google Stadia. Google Stadia is like Shadowplay from um, NVIDIA, you know. Um, oh, no, Shadowplay is independent, but it's the same concept. It's... Um, cloud-based computing so it means you are just streaming yes. the content to your computer yeah you know so a bit a bit similar to what endstream is doing mm -hmm. with the with the difference that you are actually working on a remote computer um and it's interesting because um the game industry generally says it's bullshit because of you know lags and all that stuff and not everywhere for example in germany not all regions who have good internet and all that stuff or stable internet but Medfire says everything is in the cloud and my game should support the cloud too it just feels weird to like you know try to play a game over like team viewer you know i mean <laughs> that's, that's what you know that's that's what comes to yeah. mind is 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 that kind of thing and it's just yeah it streaming video like that so quickly is is difficult i mm -hmm. mean i guess on some levels you know it's 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 similar to streaming a video on youtube except that there's not you can't buffer or anything because you know you need to be able to react and and you know play the game well ah Nobody's here. The noise is starting. Noise is Nobody's starting. here. <laughs> <laughs> but that this is, isn't life. It isn't life. Mm. <laughs> and we have no we have no t guests today except ourselves. Yeah. But as you said, as you said before, um, I played um, multiplayer games via Team Fury before. Mm -hmm. I played once with Andrew Fischer, our staff member. I played Ludo. Which is called in German Mensch ärgere dich nicht over yeah. over Team Fuhr. So wait, 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 wait. So, slow, down, slow down here one second now. The game is Ludo. Yeah. L U D L U D O. 
That's the English name. That's of in the English. German and then yeah. you just you just recited a book. Like like you you just like there were like four sentences in what you just said. Yeah, in German it's called Mensch ärgere dich nicht, which literally um, translates. Man, don't get angry. Yeah, but in English it's called Ludo. <laughs> okay. Again, the Germans, you know. Yeah, yeah. Contra pro. But, but you, uh, I don't Ludo. know. Is, Lu is Ludo known in America? I don't know. I'm looking it up. It's a board game, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, is. oh, 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 yes, no, that's, this is, uh, uh Parcheesi, and uh, Sorry, Sorry is the name of the game yeah, here, that's Sorry. Yeah, that's the American name, Yeah. the British name is Ludo. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. it's very, you know, everyone knows it here in Germany. Yeah, with yeah. The, with and it's originally German by Josef Friedrich Schmidt, mm -hmm. uh, it was published 105 years ago, and then it, it came to America as Sorry, or to uh, to India and UK as Ludo. Yeah, Mensch, yeah, Man, don't get upset is the German <laughs> don't name. Don't get upset. Yeah, that's the. Uh, <laughs> that's a, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or Mens ärger jetzt nicht, the Dutch version. Hmm. Well, Italy, it's it's called whatever. Non tiara, don't get upset. Bulgaria, it's also don't get angry, man. <laughs> and and in yeah. Romania, it translates to do not be upset, brother. <laughs> Bro, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, anyway, uh, but but uh, but the point was that for such board games, <laughs> these, the lag doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think that they actually that that board game, something like that, may have actually been one of the online games like that you could play on Q Link on the C sixty four back in the day. Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, and if you want to talk about lag, I mean, that's three twelve hundred baud right there, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So coming up next was yes Hans Ippisch. Mm. Uh, and I interviewed him about his new Intellivision um, yeah, game Intellivision. console that's coming in exactly one year, as we, they announced recently. We've been talking uh, about the Intellivision. Amica. Yeah, we've been talking about the Amic Intellivision. Yeah, yeah, about the what, what, we've been talking about the new Intellivision console for I guess about a year now since it, for, it was yeah. first announced, and some things just for people that haven't been keeping up at home. Um, Developments have occurred in which they've talked about the kind of games that are going to be released uh, being like family friendly and simple games, um, and then they've described you know the, a, a couple of, you know a list of some of the games that'll be ported over has arrived, and just recently Hans Zipich has been named the um, what well, what what is he the director or CEO or something like that? He is the CEO um, of um, in Television Europe. Right, so he's he's been named CEO of Intellivision Europe, overseeing this whole project. So, which is interesting for us because we've been talking about it from the outside, but now we've had dealings with Hans, so we kind of know yeah. him. So that gives us sort of yes. like an in to talk yeah. more about it. Yeah, it it was also us where he talked the first time um, about the fact that David Crane, his hero from the childhood, who made. Um, um, uh, little computer people and Ghostbusters actually um, uh, approached Tommy Tellerico and he will he will he will go back from retirement mm -hmm. and develop games for it. Okay, okay. David did David, David Crane did Little Computer People. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, I've learned mm -hmm. a new thing today. Yeah. <laughs> And not in your computer, but on, but at your computer. Yes, yes. Maybe in the next podcast, I'll actually have the little computer people playing on this thing behind me. Yeah. Or or Pitfall. That's another game. Mm, Pitfall, I knew. Yeah. 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 Okay. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. So there's so anyway, video for this. Pardon? Is there video for this? Yes, of course. And uh, Tommy was so happy that we did this interview. He did even a personal um, thank you. As a comment on the YouTube video, mm -hmm. so that was nice. Cool. It was actually a surprise for me because you know the thing is, 
um, when Martin and I we normally make plans like who should we approve, uh, who should we approach for interview appointments? Yes. And then we are talking about okay, what's who who made an announcement? What's coming retro like this year? And I, I, sometimes I really don't know, but it's interesting for me. We were the only ones making an interview with Hans about the Amico and television and put it on YouTube. Yeah. There's nobody else doing it this year. <laughs> yeah. And this surprised me. <laughs> like last year, it was breakfast. We were the only one doing an interview on, on YouTube, which, was of, which of course made it the most successful video for last year. Because everybody was watching our interview video because there wasn't any other one. Right, yeah, right, right. <laughs> so um, it seems like I have some lucky hands sometimes, you know. Or, or like with Equinox Deep Descent, when we were the first ones mm -hmm. who were allowed to make an interview for our podcast while there was a press embargo officially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, that was totally amazing. Mm. Um, the other thing... Um, that happened is um, I, I made an interview that, that was totally new to me Necro Barista and Necro Barista um, we also talked about this before um, is a development studio from Australia full with staff members from Vietnam and they are working on um, enemy slideshow based adventure game what you know yeah how is that <laughs> sounds weird yes and <laughs> and and the publisher is from china a slideshow are... based adventure game though yeah because I, I i i can't think of anything less adventuresome than watching a slideshow <laughs> yeah it's 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 um, more like um and uh, it's more like um any uh, uh, anime comic style, but not like video sequences, but like, well, comics, huh? comics. So, so how does that? How does it work? Like, how is that? <laughs> like, is it like a no, no? I, I'm serious about that. Like, is it like a choose your own adventure kind of thing where, where a thing like you, there's a there's a slide, there's a panel up, and it's like. What do you do next? And it's like blah, 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 no, blah. no. It's more like it's more like the cutscenes where you have uh, conversations in um, Monkey Island. Okay. But you don't pick your answer, but um, you make your decisions. Okay. And then the game progresses like that. Okay. So it's a, it's 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 a, it's a unique kind of game, and we did the interview with Nock Wu, who is the graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, and and the publisher is from China, and they are aiming for the European retro market. So okay. this whole, the, I mean, imagine this: you, you are a group of students studying computer design. Then you are in Australia. Then you stay in Australia. Um, um, create your own development studio. Get a Chinese publisher. You know. And then aim the European retro market. The combination of the two uh, of the four little attributes is like, oh my god, this is mind blowing. The whole it makes, the makes whole perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. So which which proves the point that everything is global nowadays. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, like well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Right. And now, and now there was another game that I forgot the name of, uh, um, because I also had an appointment with Korean. Um, Korean, we had last year uh, um, an appointment um, with Ensemble Studios for um, Sound Trolls and Seagulls, but this year um, it was different. This year we had. This year they were actually attending at Gamescom as publishers, and they published for um, the Switch the game called Memora, which is more like a mist um, kind of game. What's it called? Remo like a kind of mist. It's mist. called Memora. 
I'll, I'll, okay. Alrighty, that was it. Thanks, people, for right. hanging out with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, hope to see you again next year, people. People. That's it.